Jumbo, everybody, it's Molly with All Ears, and I'm here today with a brand new video. We are continuing our foodie review series, and today is a very special day because BOMA at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge has officially reopened this morning. This is the first buffet back to Walt Disney World. This is a fan favorite restaurant, so I'm gonna head to not one but two meals at BOMA today, check everything out, see if this is still a an under-the-radar amazing restaurant. What are buffets like now? We're gonna figure it all out together. I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited, I hope you're hungry. Let's get in there. So, as a reminder, we are still under a mask requirement indoors, and BOMA is a buffet, which means when you are up at the buffet, you need to have your mask on, regardless of vaccination status, masks are required indoors right now at Walt Disney World. Um, they also have hand sanitizer along the buffet, but besides that, it's just a normal buffet, like buffets have existed for all time. It's still self-service. Um, they made a few tweaks to certain dishes, but m for the most part, it's a buffet. They're back. If you've never been to Boma, it is an African-inspired buffet restaurant at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's one of the most underrated yet beloved buffets and restaurants in general in all of Walt Disney World. This is definitely a fan favorite. Um, I love the decor in here. I love the decor in this entire resort. It's one of my all-time favorites. Um, but Boma, the word actually refers to a livestock enclosure that African communities would use um, to protect their livestock from predators. So when you actually look around here, you can see the workings of the Boma, which are things like this. This would have been a natural uh, material fence that they would use to keep their livestock safe. So that is what Boma actually means. And the cool detail in this restaurant, like I said, this is the first buffet to return to Disney World. So they have placed a couple hand sanitizer stations along the buffet when you first enter. But besides that, it's pretty much working as normal. It's self-serve. Grab those tongs, grab yourself a plate, get what you'd like. Amongst the many, many tables, they actually have a couple tables that are shaped in the continent of Africa. It's reversed, it's a mirror image of it, but they have a couple of huge tables like that. It's just a really fun and beautiful restaurant the way that this entire resort is absolutely gorgeous. But let's go check out the food. My wonderful server has brought me the Kenya 22 coffee. Now, this is an all you care to enjoy meal, so basic coffee, tea, juice, soda, that will be included with your meal. However, if you want fancy coffee like this one, if you want an alcoholic beverage, those will be an upcharge. So this is Kenyan coffee. She said it's fancy, dark, delicious coffee. Let's get some of that. Yum. All right, let's, let's start with this coffee. You know I love coffee. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. That is fabulous coffee. You can tell that that's fancy coffee. Not that I don't like Disney blend coffee. I absolutely do and I love that Joffrey supplies it. They do different blends for different restaurants, but oh man. That is fabulous coffee. So if you like coffee, it's a press pot so you're gonna get more than one cup out of it. That is good. This first station of the buffet, they're calling the braai, which is actually a style of grilling meat in South Africa. Um, so this is your grill section. This is where you're gonna get more of that unique, interesting African flavor that you're not gonna see at all the buffets or all the restaurants at Disney World. Um, you've got pap, which is cornmeal, kind of like their version of grits, chakalaka, which is a spicy tomato stew, some oat grilled asparagus, and some oat grilled tomatoes that these look Phenomenal. Look at that char action on those tomatoes. And then here's the stew and the pap. Continuing with the more unique dishes, you've got turkey baboti, which is actually an egg-based dish um, that's common in Africa. I have had baboti here before. It's absolutely fabulous. Definitely recommend it. This one's made with turkey. And then you have a carving station here where they are doing a carved ham. And then the boma mustard, which is an absolute must for me. It's this chipotle and teriyaki mustard sauce. It's a plus. You can see them going hard on the grill back there, grilling up this ham, which looks amazing. Wrapping up this section, there is an oatmeal station. So they've got oatmeal made from steel cut oats right here. And then they also have coconut steel cut oats, which are a plant-based option. We've got banana chips. You can know anything's a plant-based vegan option if it has that little green uh, leaf symbol next to it. So that's how you'll be able to use that. Um, so they've got banana chips, honey, and then raisins and brown sugar. So there's a little oatmeal station if you're an oatmeal kind of person. In this next section, you're gonna find some of your classic breakfast items. We've got bacon, pork sausage, tater tots, and then West African sweet plantains. This is one of my favorite sections, carbs. 
Um, you have regular pancakes, blueberry pancakes, as well as Mickey and Simba waffles and syrup for all of those things. Next section, the egg section. Gaston's favorite section, probably. Um, regular scrambled eggs, scrambled eggs with spinach, tomato, and feta. And then this is one change to the buffet. Um, they have omelets as a grab-and-go situation. So you've got a ham and cheese, a just cheese, and then a Western omelet. Prior to the closure when this was a buffet, they actually had an omelet station. Um, so that is one change they have made. Getting into our cold foods now, you have a lovely fruit section. So to start, we've got an avocado, papaya, and grapefruit salad that's been individually bowled out. Looks fresh and delicious. You also have a mixed berry yogurt parfait as a grab and go situation. Oftentimes on buffets before, uh, parfaits would be a scoop it yourself thing, but those are grab and go again. Um, and then we have watermelon slices with a regular mint pistachio fruit, crumb, that, regular watermelon slices, and then grapes and assorted fruit salad. A charcuterie station featuring a variety of meats and cheeses. They also have hard boiled eggs here and a new dish. This is a deviled egg, but it's got smoked salmon on top of it. Can't wait to try that because I love a deviled egg. My favorite section continues carbs part two. Um, here you have a variety of pastries. You have blueberry muffins, apple pockets, guava turnovers, and chocolate chip muffins. Then right next to it, you've got some of Boma's specialties, two different items. I can't wait to eat both of them. You have a French toast bread pudding. There's a vanilla sauce here that's fabulous on that. And then my all-time favorite thing at Boma Breakfast, their pecan praline sauce with their sticky buns. Look at all of those pecans on there. I cannot wait to eat one of these. This is why I'm here, frankly. Rounding out Carbs R Us, you have classic cinnamon rolls, bagels, croissants, and a variety of toppings for those. Butters, peanut butter, jellies and jams, and then cream cheese. There's also plain toast right here with a toaster. And there's your buffet line. <laughs> Sorry whoever's editing this, I have that song stuck in my head. Okay, now that we've actually looked at everything on the buffet, I like to scan the buffet and see everything I want to eat. Now that I've looked at it, let's actually get food and eat it. Here is my bounty off the buffet. I got a little bit of everything that looked unique or exciting or some of my favorites as well. So there's a lot of stuff on the buffet, a lot of things to choose from. Um, of course, I had to get the French uh, toast bread pudding. That was a must with the vanilla sauce. My personal favorite, again, the sticky buns. I got one of those apple turnovers. It looks like the apple turnovers they have at Topolino's Terrace at Riviera. I love those. And then this is off of the braai section. I got some of that carved meat. Um, I got the baboti with turkey. I got some of the chakalaka and the pap. And then the chef there actually said the coconut oatmeal is fabulous. I wasn't going to get oatmeal, but I got to listen to the chef. So, I, I mean, it's a rule. Um, I grabbed the fancy eggs with the spinach and feta and tomato in there. And then a couple of classics. I had to get myself a Simba waffle, legally required when you're at Boma, I think. A blueberry pancake, sausage bacon. I wanted to try the deviled egg with the smoked salmon, as well as the watermelon with the mint on top. So... Let's dig in, shall we? I'm gonna start with some of the hot dishes. So here's the baboti. Again, it's got egg and turkey. It also has raisins and tomatoes and peppers. Full of flavor, I hope. It is full of flavor, as I hope. It tastes like peppery eggs with a little bit of ground turkey in there. There's a little bit of spice, a little, the tiniest bit of heat, but not a lot. It's absolutely fabulous. I love bobo tea. I've had it before at Chico. Um, it's, it kind of like stresses some people out because they'll sometimes put animals in there you maybe aren't familiar with, like elk. Um, but it's always fabulous. Now I'm going to try this ham. Mm. Ham is my carbs meat of choice. Like, I don't love Thanksgiving turkey. Give me Christmas ham. And I'm obsessed with this Chipotle honey mustard that goes on it. I wish I could put that on everything. I might at this buffet. It's just going to be syrup and honey mustard on everything. I'm going to try this pap and the tomato stew. Oh, talk about flavor. There's a sweetness and a spiciness to the tomato stew. And then I love the mealy pap. It reminds me of grits. It's a little bit of sweet because of the cornmeal, but then combined with that spicy tomato soup, that is something unique you're not gonna get at another Disney breakfast buffet, and it is delicious. Highly recommend trying it. Um, and then I'm gonna wrap off the first station with a little bit of this oatmeal. Mm. Do I love the coconut in there? I love coconut. 
It's a delicious flavor, IMO, and that they're still really, really creamy. Like I wouldn't know there's not dairy in that. So if you're a plant-based eater, that's a great choice. But now I'm gonna eat eggs, which are the opposite of plant-based. Mm. Oh my gosh, those are so creamy. You can definitely taste the feta, you can taste the spinach. There's not a lot, there's no spice or heat or anything, but they are creamy, creamy eggs because of that feta. Yum. These are incredible. I'm actually gonna ask for hot sauce for these, but these are fabulous eggs. Moving right along to my second platter of food, I'm gonna go hard in this Simba waffle. Why are Disney waffles so good? I'm also gonna enjoy a blueberry pancake, which I gotta love a blueberry pancake because a little sweet little fruit in there. Fabulous. Mm. Fabulously cooked pancake, a little pop from that blueberry. Sausage now, shall we? Again, it is pork sausage. It doesn't have a lot of spice. I kind of expect it to be spicy, but it's not. It's got good flavor. Simple bacon. Ooh, crispy. Very good bacon. Now I'm gonna try some of these more unique items. This is that mint watermelon. Oh my gosh, that is fabulous. I love watermelon, but to add that little extra layer of crunch and crumble on top, very unique, very simple, but fabulous flavor. And now this deviled egg, I don't love salmon, but I do love deviled eggs, so. It mostly just tastes like a smoky deviled egg. I didn't really taste the salmon per se. And if you love deviled eggs, give that one a whirl. And finally, the reason we're all here, gonna prepare my bites, look how good this French toast looks. Bread pudding, French toast, are you kidding? And this sticky bun, oh my goodness gracious, look at that. Look at all those nuts in there. Look at that. It's like Ohana bread pudding consistency, and but it's breakfast somehow. It's got the cinnamony crumble on top, and then I put the vanilla sauce on it. The vanilla sauce is very sweet, so if you're not sure if you want something that sweet, I recommend getting the French toast on its own and then maybe putting a little bit on the side or going back for the vanilla sauce, but it's got this perfectly crispy like crumble on the top, and it's nice and sweet. I'm going to try my apple turnover now. Mm. A delicious flaky apple pastry. I'm enjoying that immensely, but I do like the French toast better. And we save the best for last. Sticky bun. This sticky bun is so good. I might actually cry a little bit. It's got these perfect crunchy pecans on top of it. And then it's got a caramel glaze. And it's got a beautiful sticky cinnamon bun in there, but mostly what you taste is the glazed pecans. And if you are in the Disney parks, like me and my family, one of the things that my family loves are the glazed almonds and pecans, like in the cone thing that you can get around the parks. That's what this tastes like in sticky bun form. It is so decadent and sweet and caramelly and perfect. And I have missed these sticky buns. These are why I come to this restaurant, frankly. No, all the food's phenomenal, but these in particular, just finished breakfast at Bowman. Meal number one of the day here. Let's talk about the experience. First of all, buffets are back. I actually expected that the cast members would have been serving it, like it would have been a line of a buffet and somebody would be serving each thing for you. That is not what happened. It is a serve yourself buffet, just as buffets have always been. I would have preferred it to be the cast members. I don't know if I'm ready for a buffet yet. Given the last year and a half, I don't know how I ever liked buffets. So that's just my opinion. I don't know if everyone's comfortable going to a buffet, but if you're not comfortable holding tongs that everybody else has held, you're gonna wanna skip over right now. But let's talk about the good part, the food. This food is phenomenal. Those eggs are so good. Those feta eggs are like maybe the best scrambled eggs I've ever had. I'm obsessed with that sticky roll. Love that carved ham. Love the unique meal uh, choices like that chipotle honey mustard, the mealy pap, um, the spicy tomato stew, that uh, bread pudding French toast. It is so, so good. It is phenomenal food. 
probably flavor-wise the bre best breakfast buffet you're going to get at Walt Disney World. It's $29 for adults, $17 for kids age 3 to 9, which is not a crazy amount considering how much food you can eat. It's all you care to enjoy. You can make a nice leisurely breakfast out of it. My recommendation would be to go early to Animal Kingdom, get to Animal Kingdom at Rope Drop, do a bunch of things over there, and then it's a short car ride or a bus ride over from Animal Kingdom to come eat here as like a late breakfast. And then it could kind of be like a brunch, so you'd be really getting two meals out of the cost as opposed to just one. So I do think this food is excellent. It's top drawer. It's phenomenal. I'm so glad it's back, that sticky bun. I'm going to think about it for the rest of the day, or at least until dinner when we do this again. So love the food, love the cast members. It was all fabulous. I'm just personally like mm, a little bit still when it comes to buffets. For now, I'm going to go walk around, let my stomach settle, and uh, we'll be back here for dinner. And just like magic, it's dinner time. I am back at Boma for round two. We are here for dinner. Boma's not open for lunch. It's just breakfast and dinner, but I am back. Dinner at Boma is known for their buffet again, uh, but they're known for their incredible soups, iconic zebra domes, carving station, and I'm excited to jump into meal two. Headed back in for dinner. Dinner's definitely the more popular meal. Um, I like both their meals a lot, and it's gonna be the same situation where it is a buffet. They do have the hand sanitizer at the beginning of both ends of the buffet, um, and you need to wear your mask when you go up, but it is a fully self-service buffet at dinner as well. Let's take a walk down the buffet line, shall we? So just like at breakfast, they're gonna have some classic food, but they're also gonna get a little more adventurous. So here we've got a street corn pudding with spinach and chakalaka jam. Remember chakalaka, that's that spicy tomato um, I had at breakfast. We've got olive oil, herb roasted potatoes, and then a salmon with a yasa sauce here. You can see we've got some fabulous meat roasting on the braai. Currently I can see them actually cooking chickens. Um, but right here in this section, we've got spiced pork ribs with a honey barbecue tamarind sauce. Um, you've got extra of that tamarind barbecue sauce, some horseradish, and that boba mustard I love so much. And then for your carved meat, you've got an African carved strip loin that looks fabulous. Here we can actually see some of that chicken they are roasting up. This is Durban style chicken. Um, Durban is the largest city in the South African province of Kwazula Natal. And then we have Boboti again, but now it is with ground beef and lamb and mushrooms and egg as opposed to the turkey one we had for breakfast. This is what some people might refer to as like the kids buffet, but as you can see, it's as tall as any of the other buffets. Anybody's welcome to eat off here. But these are some of your classic foods that are safe for everybody. You've got chicken nuggies, macaroni and cheese, plain penne pasta, uh, marinara and meatballs, and then corn peas and carrots on here. A few sides here. We have a peanut rice with coconut soy sauce and ginger. That sounds amazing. I will definitely be eating that. Um, some spiced green beans with golden raisins, a West African black eyed peas and stewed tomato salad, and then rice. And everything on this one is plant-based except for the peanut rice. A lot of stuff here at Boma is plant-based um, and they are really good with allergies. They can have a chef walk the whole buffet with you and make sure they get you something that's safe for you to eat. So this is a great option for people with um, food allergies or food requirements and that still want to do something fun for a meal. Here is our soup line. Uh, this is one thing Boma is known for is their fabulous soups and some of them are going to rotate out uh, day by day or week by week but some of them are staples because they're so popular. Uh, we have an oxtail soup, a Ghanan oxtail soup. This one is my favorite right here. This is the butternut squash soup. That one should be around every day because it's so popular. This is a chicken corn chowder, also super popular, should be around every day. And then this is a seafood gumbo. I cannot wait to try this butternut squash soup. It is fabulous. Here we have a couple more dishes. We have a bean dish here called haria, uh, as well as we saw this salad at breakfast, but this is that avocado papaya and grapefruit salad. Again, both of these plant-based options. A large variety of pre-mixed salads here. You've got coleslaw, a pasta salad, a chickpea salad, a tabula salad, and a North African cauliflower salad, and then a couscous and shrimp salad. Some of those are plant-based as well. Anywhere you see this little green plant icon, that is plant-based. And next to the pre-made salads, there is a little salad bar with mixed greens, a chili cilantro vinaigrette, a buttermilk dressing, which has got lentils and sriracha in it, and then some fixings like olives, feta cheese, red onions, if you want to like to make a salad. Next up, some fresh fruits, strawberries, grapes, watermelon, and mixed fruit. And then here at the edge, we have a spiced cottage cheese with a Burberry glazed pineapple. That sounds interesting. I may have to try that. Another thing Boma is known for is a variety of dips. They've got three different hummuses here, classic coriander and sun-dried tomato, as well as some different breads. They've got French rolls, pita bread, and then mealy bread, which is sweet corn muffins, as well as some butter. And now we're getting into the good stuff here. 
dessert. We have a banana bread pudding now, a little bit different than that French toast bread pudding from earlier. Still got that yummy vanilla sauce. A couple of simpler desserts, just some chocolate chip cookies and uh, vanilla cupcakes. We've got pickier friends. The plate's a hidden Mickey though, how cute is that? And then here is the big guns. We have a pineapple financier cake. We have a Kenyan coffee tart a hazelnut brownie, and a passion fruit mousse. And of course, the main event, the reason you come to Boma for dinner, zebra domes. Let's get into this bounty of treasures. So first of all, just like at breakfast, a drink is included, not a cocktail, not a specialty drink, but a, an iced tea like I have here, water, juice, soda, coffee, tea, any of that included. You can of course upcharge if you'd like to add a specialty cocktail, non-alcoholic or a cocktail, alcoholic of course, um, you can add that. So keep that in mind. So here is the wine list. Um, this resort in general is known for having a fabulous wine list and Boma is no exception. Um, they've got a lot of South African and African wines, as you can imagine, whites and sparklings. There's a couple signature cocktails as well, but they do have a full bar, so if you don't want one of those, they can make anything happen for you. And then here are their reds and their beers. I love the Tusker Lager. That's an African beer. You can get an Animal Kingdom as well, but you could also grab it here. I added a glass of red to my meal. I think it's gonna go great with a lot of the red meat that I plan on eating. Um, and I love Pinotage wine. This is a Pinotage blend from Stellenbosch in South Africa. Um, I went there, which is neat, um, but also, Pinotage is a great varietal that is customary and it's um, South Africa's signature wine varietal. So I like to drink that whenever I can get my hands on it. Cheers. It's so good. If you like Pinot Noir, if you like kind of a lighter red wine, it's something similar to that. Um, it's definitely not as sweet. It's not a sweet wine at all, but it's not as dry as like some Merlots or Cabs. It's just a very light, nice red wine that's going to go great with my meal, especially when I get that steak. And here is my treasure trove after two trips to the buffet, getting a little bit of a, of a lot of things, not everything. I just mostly want to try the unique and exciting things. This starting things off is that sweet corn pudding with the spinach and chakalaka jam. So that's that spicy tomato um, jam that we had this morning with mealy pap. It's now with a sweet corn pudding, which I'm so jazzed about. Um, I also got some of the carving station. This is that strip loin and I put on that uh, chipotle boma mustard that I'm obsessed with. I also put the chipotle boma mustard on that Durban style chicken we saw them because I can't be tamed when it comes to that mustard. I would drink it, honestly. Um, I am trying the boboti as well. That's one of their specialties. Speaking of boboti, um, one of the chefs told me that at breakfast time, they actually have a plant-based boboti and plant-based sausage. You can ask for that. Uh, this is one of the best restaurants, again, for allergies and special diets. So um, they will make sure to take care of you. We've got some mac and cheese here. This is just classic mac and cheese. And I got it because I want to eat it with the steak and pretend I'm at Jico. Still isn't open yet. Um, this is their version of mac and cheese. It's not a Jico recipe, but Jico taught me steak and mac and cheese is never a bad idea. This is the peanut coconut rice. I was recommended this by multiple chefs. They said this is the bomb. You have to get it. So who am I to argue with that? Um, as well as I am trying out the spiced green beans and one of the ribs off of the carving station. All right, so we're gonna start with plate number one. All right, I'm gonna start with this steak. This restaurant is so good. This is not a signature restaurant and that is the best buffet steak I've ever had. I put a little extra horseradish on there. I put that mustard on there. Mac and cheese is creamy and perfect. Get those together, you will not regret it. Now let's try the baboti again. Um, this one is ground beef and lamb. It has a little sweetness in it. It's definitely got curry flavor. You can taste that ground beef. It's not hot or anything like that. The chipotle in the bone mustard is a little hot, but the, the, uh, the baboti is not hot at all and it is A+. plus. It's definitely more unique and adventurous. Which one thing I do like about buffets is that you can get as much as you want. So it's not served to you in a skillet. You can you can literally get like a bite of it if you want to just try it, which I recommend you do when you're coming somewhere like this. I put a little extra of that tamarind barbecue sauce on that. That does have a little bit of a kick. It's got a little bit of spice, but if you didn't add the extra, I don't think you would be bothered by it. Very, very cooked, well cooked rib. Great addition to the braai section. And to round that off, got a little bit of this chicken. 
that chicken is so moist and so perfect. Sometimes when you cook a lot of chicken, it gets dry. That is not the case here. I put, again, an extra of that Boma mustard on there. Um, and when I went to Africa, we ate a lot of stuff off of the braai, and this is bringing me back. And of course, the sweet corn with the spicy tomato stew was perfect. It's like little grits bowl, almost. It's got a little sweetness from the corn and then the little kick from the, the tomato stew. What an adventurous, exciting adventure we're on together. Next up, I'm gonna try this peanut and coconut rice. I'm not being dramatic. This food is amazing. It's making me forget that I had to go to a buffet to get it. It tastes like peanut butter. When I was little, I used to put peanut butter on rice at summer camp and everyone called me weird. Look who's weird now. Still me. I'm a grown woman with over 100 pairs of mini ears. I don't really taste coconut or soy sauce. I think those are just cutting how sweet the peanut butter would be. But that's fun and I bet you can get your kids to eat that. The green beans, so crispy and perfect. I'm very picky about green beans. I love green beans, but I like them to have a crunch, and these do. I grabbed two of the soups as well. This is that signature butternut squash soup, and this is that signature corn chicken chowda. Soup number one, chowda. It smells so good, and there's fresh peppers and stuff in there. It's got a little bit of heat. Ooh, that is so good. There's the sweetness of the peppers, but then there's a little bit of heat. It's nice and creamy. Full corn kernels, big chunks of chicken. That is so full of flavor, so delicious, just like everything here. Butternut squash soup, their signature. It tastes like fall. It tastes like autumnal fall times, which you may know, my favorite. I love an autumnal flavor. You've got cinnamon, you've got that earthy. Butternut squash. It kind of tastes like pie if pie was soup. That sounds weird, but if you eat this, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You definitely have to like a sweeter, like autumnal flavor to like this one. But so good. And last but not least, I am sampling a little bit of everything off of the dessert platter. I love these little mini desserts, so you can try a little of everything. Um, I did get that banana bread pudding here with the vanilla sauce. This is a passion fruit tart. This is that pineapple fancier. This is a um, hazelnut chocolate brownie. Of course, I had to get the Kenyan toffee, um, Kenyan coffee tart. And what would it be a trip to Mount Boma without zebra domes? How could it be a trip to Boma without zebra domes? These are those iconic desserts made with Amarula liqueur. So they do cook off the alcohol, but they don't recommend giving a bunch to kids. But there's no like warning that kids can't have it. So I guess it's up to your own discretion. They do cook it, but they are made with alcohol. Um, Amarula is an African liqueur that actually is made out of the Amarula tree. First up, the bread pudding. Now, it's not quite as amazing as Ohana's, but it's still absolutely fabulous. It's got those cinnamon flavors, that eggy flavor that bread pudding has. Love that sweet vanilla sauce on top. A little bit of crunch from the crumble. Again, the Ohana bread pudding cannot be beat, but this one is great. Next up, trying the pineapple. I'm not a huge pineapple person, but I wanted to try a little of everything. So that tastes like a little pineapple cake. It's very dense, it's thick. But it's very good, and if you, it doesn't have a lot of pineapple. It just tastes kind of like a thick cupcake. Now the passion fruit. It's a passion fruit mousse on a shortbread cookie. Big punch of passion fruit in the face, so if you don't like that flavor, that'd be a pass, but that's very refreshing, very light. Now I believe this is the coffee one. Okay, so when I looked at them, I mixed up the coffee and the hazelnut. The coffee is the little round one, and it tastes like a coffee mousse, which I'm very into. It's very, very rich, but it's cut by the coffee, so it's not super sickly sweet. Um, and now I'm going to try the hazelnut. That tastes like a basic Disney brownie, which I love. No shade. With the hazelnut cream on top, the little crunchies on top, that is A+. plus. I think that's my favorite thing I've had so far, but... Save the best for last. Gotta get ourselves a zebra dome. Now, zebra domes are a very divisive snack. Most people love them, but some people hate them. I'm obviously in the love them camp. You have to like that Amarula flavor. Again, it's from a fruit tree in Africa. And I recommend 
If you, I, I don't just recommend it. I insist if you come to MoMA, you have to try a zebra dough. It's creamy, it's delicious, it's got this very distinctive flavor. It's got like a shortbread cake type thing on the bottom, and they're fabulous. Great dessert selection. And my wonderful server brought me a little coffee to have with dessert. Just wrapped up meal number two at MoMA, and oh my gosh, that dinner is so fabulous. I can hardly stand it. Everything I had was amazing. Highlights for me included that steak with the macaroni and cheese with that boma mustard on top. I love, love, loved that uh, corn chowder. I love that butternut squash soup. Of course, you gotta love the zebra domes. That peanut butter rice was unbelievable, but truly every single thing I had was absolutely excellent. Dinner pricing is 49 for adults, 29 for kids. And truly, I can't tell you which meal is better. Um, dinner to me felt a little more special. There's a little bit more of unique dishes. However, breakfast is absolutely phenomenal. You've got those unique African inspired dishes. You've got those pecan sticky rolls that I love so much, but then you also have your classics um, like the Simba waffles and scrambled eggs and bacon. Speaking of eggs, also love those feta eggs. So the food here is absolutely amazing. This is such an underrated gem. Again, I think this would be a great add on to an Animal Kingdom day. Just drive over or take the bus over um, and you get to explore this beautiful resort as well and just enjoy Boma. So I absolutely love it. Now, again, the thing that's gonna throw people is the buffet. If you're comfortable eating at a buffet right now, then I think this is absolutely amazing. It lived up to all of my memories of this restaurant. It remains one of my favorite places to eat. Um, but if you're not comfortable with a buffet right now, then I would suggest waiting a little bit. So definitely let me know what you think of Boma down in the comments. Let me know what other restaurants you wanna see in the future be reviewed on the show. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net. And until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and so delicious. Hey, it's Molly here. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.